let's listen let's listen to a couple of bible stories uh, stories that have to do with what you can get out of the story we're looking at the outcome did the outcome come in, in a form of victory or defeat what did they say or do throughout the story that brought about that outcome and then pay attention to how you're living your life so that you can attribute that same success to your life or if it's a failure how you can steer clear from failures in your life the bible is full of stories jesus christ was a storyteller he told many parables and the disciples uh, often they were drawn in by the story but each and every story had uh, tell about the do's and don'ts of life and if you follow the, the do's you get success if you follow you follow the, the, the fruit so to speak so let's take a, a story like uh, like uh, David and Goliath so David was a nobody right and a nobody to the point where when the guy chosen the prophet chosen by God to go and seek out the, uh, the next king because the last king uh, disobeyed God so he lost his he lost his position he lost his place he lost his crown and so God stripped him of the place that he had put him whoa pause right there what does that tell you guys it tells you that obedience is a big deal tells you that when God tells you to do something do it right that was Old Testament there's more grace now that if you disobey you know God will give you chances and stuff like that but God that has never changed right he's the same God so basically he wants you to pay attention to what he says and do it the way he wants you to do it but let's go on with the story I just felt like that was worthy of a pause and just to just to kind of reflect on the fact that because he was disobedient he God took away the right to be king from him and was looking for another man worthy to hold the crown so he searched God searched and found David then God told his messenger a prophet named Samuel go and fetch out David okay this is where he lives but you'll go over there and when you find him I want you to anoint him because this man is gonna be a, a man after my own heart and God knows who's who and what's what. So he, he uh, studied David and, and David, you know, passed the test, so to speak. This is why I'm always talking about character. Big deal. So, so moving on. Samuel finds David. At this point, nobody knows David. David is an outcast. Okay, can you relate? I know I could. So David was a nobody, right? He was tending to the sheep of the field while his brothers... There was eight in total, right? Um, and and David was out out of the, the 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 flock of the eight, so meaning he was a loner, right? And so you can read a lot into that. It's like unqualified, a loner, you know, one that that doesn't fit the profile, one that doesn't doesn't um look like the rest of them, kind of thing. Sorry for the darkness. And so, you, this is how you're supposed to, you know, you read the Bible and you, you study it. You're looking at all this stuff, but basically you're extracting from the Bible, you know, the points of how it can apply to your own life, right? And you're seeing how God does stuff so that you can appropriate yourself as such, so you can see the, the right type of fruit. So then, fast forward, uh, Samuel finds David, anoints him. And now David uh, is put in a position where he he meets Saul, right? So God is positioning David. He's moving David, okay? David was once over here on this location, and now God has anointed him and told him, I got a mission for you. I got a job for you. You're going to become the king of Israel. You're very uh, special to me, and I want to use you, okay? So he was given a promise, right? But at that time... Uh, there was another king so it's not like he slipped right in to being king that's another point to extract because when God gives you a promise it's not that it's going to happen the next day a lot of people think that, that, that things just come to be in the snap of a finger because God spoke to them some, some things that you need to work out 
in your character a lot of the time it's the character is in the way you have to build the king inside of the person so that the crown fits on their head so to speak right so that they could be a good king and not a foolish king so then the story goes like this um everybody was scared of everybody was scared of goliath goliath was a giant okay i think he measured something like nine feet six inches something like that and you know david was regarded as a boy you know he was small puny he wasn't anything um impressive to look at right so then so then when david was the one that raised his hand because nobody else did uh, David was on the volunteer to take Goliath down. Everybody started to scoff at that and laugh at that and mock at that. Goliath was like, come on, really? You know? And so, you know, this is another point to extract is that, is that with God, all things are possible. You know? Even even if it's an unmatched, you know? Had Goliath, had, had David not been with God, Goliath would have had him for breakfast. Right? Or lunch. But... Because God was with David, David was going to win that battle, no matter what. So Goliath could have grew by another nine feet, and he still would have went down because God was with David. So then the story goes like this, that David confronted Goliath, and he said, "I'm gonna, you come at me with weapons, carnal weapons, such as a, a sword and a shield and this and that, but I come at you with the God of Israel. You know, you're... you're because Goliath was kind of insulting Israel as a whole. He's like, where is your God, you know? And then basically uh, David stood up in the place of defending God. So David took down Goliath. He threw a stone at his head. He went down. He cut his head off. And, but David, before he did that, he prophesied it. He prophesied it how he was going to do it. So another point to take, prophesy you know prophesy stand in a place with god see what god wants you to say and then prophesy in one voice with god over your future over what you want to declare over your future very powerful so so you see how many points we're taking from the story of david and goliath and so it's like these are the fruits of the story this is the the, the stuff that you take from it so that you could apply it to your own life so that you can go in the direction of, of victory and success and fruit so so when you put it all together you you have uh, a lot of different bullet points to live by prophecy prophecy belief faith character uh, relationship with God and another thing is is that God had David in process you know David was in a process even before he knew that he was in a process this is what a lot of people don't understand. This is that everything that you're going through, whether your boyfriend problem, your girlfriend problem, whatever, all your sins, all your trouble, all, you're actually, God's working with it. Even though you may not be walking the walk with God, you could be smoking blunts or popping pills or drinking, you're still, God is still going to take all that material and build you up in the way that once you do start paying attention to God, once you are ready to turn your, your, your sight to God and say, I'm going to follow you, He's going to take all of that sin, all of that bad behavior. He's going to modify you so that you can... So one of the good things that come from living uh, a rebellious life, like a gangster life kind of thing, one of the good things is that you are tough. Like that's a byproduct. You got to be tough in that life because... Like the people, if you're not tough, they're gonna they're, like how many fights did I get into? I don't know, I lost count, but it made me tough. So that's one of the good things because when, when you move, when you when you transition into Christianity, you gotta be tough because now, um, it's like you have the devil coming after you, you have demons coming after you. You gotta be tough, resilient. You gotta over be a, an overcomer. You gotta. You got to fight back, right? But this, this fight is not with your hands. This fight is in the spiritual realm. This fight is more with the heart, with your, with your diligence, with your focus, with your concentration. With your, like this, this fight is different, but it nevertheless is still a fight. And so that's why I'm always telling people it takes more of a man to be a Christian than it does to be uh, one of these uh, petty uh, gangsters or whatever. Because 
you have no idea how much I have to go through as a Christian, right? But the 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 the, the fact is is that it, it builds me up stronger in character. You know, it's easier it's easier to, to, to do the wrong thing than it is to do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Like to do the right thing, it takes more guts, it takes more strength, it takes more all of these qualities of a human being to come out and do the right thing. It's easier to take shortcuts, to quit, to give up. It's easier not to care than to care. It's easier to turn your back on something than it is to 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 stick by, right? And God calls us to do the right thing. So automatically, it, that makes that person a bigger man that, that you know, raised that, ch that kid that wasn't their kid, right? And... Just because the quality of life was inside of his heart to say, yes, I'll, I'll, I will, you know, if they married that woman and they're with that woman, but she had a, 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 ch a child before they ever got there and he raises that child is because there's godliness in that person, in that, that heart. That doesn't necessarily make it easy. It makes it hard. But that's why they are, are tough, right? They're, they're, that's a real man. And so, you know, to do to, to live the, the Christian life, it takes guts. It takes it takes perseverance. It takes um, it takes brave you, you being brave and not being a coward, right? Um, so absolutely. Uh, and so and so when David stood up to Goliath, he had to be brave because everybody else was a coward. Everybody else, you know, was intimidated by the size of the giant. But David was walking by faith, right? Not by sight. So when he saw Goliath, all he saw was a dead man. He didn't see, he didn't see uh, the possibility of, of, of the giant taking him down. He said, no, nah, man. He said, by this afternoon, the birds are gonna be eating your corpse. He prophesied. <laughs> so each and every story in the Bible has its truth to tell you to develop you on the inside to give you nuggets of the supernatural of how to appropriate yourself on earth so that you can go and venture out on your daily activities so that you can see the same results that they saw back then there's a lot of truth there's a lot of revelation okay there's the do's and the don'ts right daniel um no it wasn't daniel i'm sorry it was joseph he he was told a dream. Uh, God gave him a dream um, that he was going to become very prestigious, and, and his brothers, his older brothers, would bow down to him, right? and he was going to be like, like all the way up here, the commander in chief over his whole family and every and everybody, right? And so he had this epic dream, and then he shares it with his brothers. Well, you know, if the Bible was a fake. If the Bible was just a fairy tale or whatever, it would tell you something like, and the brothers rejoiced with him. They smiled and they hugged him and said, I, I would love to bow down to you, little brother. Are you kidding me? I, I always longed to, 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 you know, for you to, uh, you know, tell me what to do and, and stuff like that. Of course not. We understand the big brothers rule over the little brothers. And when the big brother heard this and he said who do you think you are you think i'm gonna bow down to you are you crazy are you, are you smoking something or what like like they took it very insultful so much so that they sold him as a slave um and and it became this epic story of of and and what to take away from all of that is don't tell prematurely what god is going to do in your life to the to 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 you know, is to watch and guard your mouth. That's the takeaway. It's like, you know what? Think before you talk. The Bible says, uh, be quick to listen, but slow to speak. Not everybody's going to celebrate what God is doing in your life. You're going to have those haters. And if you tell a hater what God is going to do in your life, you're not going to receive love. You're going to receive hate. And they're going to try to demolish you and, 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 and thwart that plan. Because now... They envy you, you know. Now it's like, oh, yeah, you know. So, so then, Joseph's story. It, it he went through a lot, a lot of stuff, all because he shared that dream. Right, he went to prison, got sold as a slave, 
He had to do a lot of manual labor. But God was using all that. He was using all of that suffering to build up his character. Back to character. You see a trend here, don't you? Character is a big deal. So God was building up character in Joseph to where, where he got to the place of, of be, becoming the character that God wanted him to be. He got promoted to the place where the dream came to pass. And then eventually the dream was fulfilled and their little brothers uh, did bow down to Joseph when they were going through a famine and Joseph had resources for them to eat and to live and survive. So he became their provider. And the story is epic because he forgave them and it was this big family reunion and it shows us humility and how you should conduct yourself. There's a lot of takeaways of what you should do when you're wronged by somebody, you know, in, in that story. You know, he had every right to be resentful. He had every right to, to get back at them, you know, in, in, in the natural. He had every right. But because character was built inside of him, he understood that what was right for him to do was to reconcile and to forgive and to hug it out and to move forward. Okay? And that's it.